next one we have a back to back presentation by Martina and Nilu from our team. Martina writes documentation for developers, switches between dark mode and light mode at, a, uh, at random in every app to keep things exciting. Uh, in previous careers, she has been a front-end developer, a .NET dev consultant, and a build server goblin. And she looks forward to the day when a database cartoonist becomes an essential job. I think this is sort of already coming to life given that she's at Prisma and makes a lot of cartoons as well and our she'll be presenting with Nilu who builds websites and apps and loves experimenting with new UI libraries she moved to Berlin about five years ago and has been trying to learn the basics of the language ever since so let's welcome Martina and Nilu hey everyone. hello everybody hello. Hey. Are you ready to present? Yeah. Yeah. It's you yeah. first, isn't it, Nilu? Yeah, I'll share my screen. Uh, sharing. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Awesome. Uh, and then I will leave you to it. Okay. Martina, you can start. Yes. So, uh, hello there. Uh, Nilu and Martina here. We're going to talk about building and uh, writing the Prisma documentation. Um, starting with Nilu, who's going to introduce herself, first of all, and talk about building the docs. Yes, building our yes, docs website. Definitely. Uh, thanks, uh, Martina. Uh, and thanks, Alex, the warm welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nilu Furbava, but I know it might be a bit hard for you to pronounce, but you can call me Nilu. Uh, I joined Prisma last year in March 2020 as a web developer, and I've been responsible for the development of all the static web pages that you see on the web related to Prisma. Not all the static web pages on the web. <laughs> this includes the Prisma homepage, the Prisma with X pages, the data guide, the blog, and yeah, the docs pages. Uh, currently, I work in between having to deal with a tantrum throwing teenager or after the terrible twos, it's threes. Uh, so if you have any tips on dealing with that, or if you need any more information about me or my work at Prisma, you can contact me in the following handles. Now, so when I said I joined as a developer, what I really mean is that I'm just the only female developer in the web dev team. So that's why you can call me uh, or the team as a one woman web dev team, wonderful name. Uh, building the docs is an ongoing project with a huge number of components and functionality. It keeps changing and being updated all the time. But for this uh, particular talk, I'll manage to cover these following topics. Uh, framework selection and why I chose Gatsby over next years. Uh, the folder structure for the uh, docs repo. The custom MDX and plugins uh, we have created. Uh, the search functionality in indexing code highlighting, and we've done a huge UX revamp a few months ago. Uh, then as a bonus topic, I'll just give you a brief idea about our design system, which is called Prisma Len. Now, when I joined, the first responsibility I was given was to build the Prisma Docs 2.0, which needed a whole array of improvisations over the Prisma 1 Docs. So even though the Prisma 1 Docs was written in next years, I went for Gatsby here. I know there are a lot of uh, Next.js fans there, and uh, you might be wondering why I chose Gatsby over Next.js, but uh, I'll just give you an idea why. The doc writers wanted a better performing, a smooth live editing support, uh, and support for large number of MDX files. And they needed better SSG support than, so last year, definitely uh, Gatsby was the choice for SSG or when I started the docs uh, project. Then we have better MDX support with Gatsby and the data fetching was much simpler using GraphQL in Gatsby. But above all, the main reason was because I was more comfortable with Gatsby than next year's. Might not be the reason now when I want to start the docs, um, I may choose uh, next year's, who knows. So if you want to check it out, uh, the Prisma docs is available in Prisma Ioba docs and the public, uh, it's a public open source uh, uh, GitHub repo, so you can uh, find that in github.com prisma bar docs. Now, this is how the docs look like. 
in case you haven't already seen, you might have already. So we have a home page now and we have the individual pages with uh, these layout. As you can see, I'll explain more about this later on. Now, the folder structure. So about the folder structure, as you can see, there are a few Gatsby related stuff. The Gatsby browser, JS, Gatsby config for all the plugin configurations, then Gatsby node for the API generation, uh, APIs for the page generation logic. Uh, then we have the SRC folder, which contains all our React logic components, the hooks, uh, the layout stuff. Then we have the content folder, which hosts the MDX files uh, used by or written by the doc writers. Uh, the functions and Prisma folder, as you can see, are the ones, uh, these two folders is for the feedback component, which you can see in the pages. Uh, this shows that we are using Prisma in our own docs project, and it is a prime location if you want to check out for a, check out an example. So yeah, so this is basically the folder structure. Now for the MDX pages, we structure the MDX pages as folders and files which are numbered so that the doc writing team can uh, maintain the ordering of the files using these numbers. And now during the build process, we strip the files of these numbers and make sure the URL does not contain these while still maintaining the order. So you do not, you do not see the URLs when you are going to the page. In the, uh, I mean, you do not see the numbers in the URL story. This is done, uh, this uh, stripping of numbers is done in Gatsby Node.js file during page generation. Now for the custom MDX components, the MDX, con uh, there are a lot of a variety of components which comes out of the box from MDX, but still our doc writers are not super happy with whatever they have. <laughs> so we are always giving into their requests for new and complicated components, and now they are very happy. So we have a huge collection of really cool MDX components. You can check out these uh, the code for these in the components bar custom MDX folder. And if you want to check out, uh, how it looks like we have a page uh, in the docs website it's called uh, it's a uh, farm in under the prisma style guide the mdx components so we have all the sample components listed here now about the custom gatsby plugins the uh, config contains all the gatsby plugins that we use which is available already from gatsby but there are times when the available plugins are not enough for our usage so we have created a few plugins for the doc specific functions so we have this Gatsby plugin page list uh, plugin, basically for SEO purposes. Then there is the uh, remark check links number list. This is for the link checker to strip the numbers and report the broken uh, links according to that. And then there is the remark to absolute URL uh, plugin, which converts these relative URLs to absolute ones so that the doc writer doesn't have to concentrate or bother about such things. Now, as your docs grow, you might have to get creative and uh, need more plugins and uh, incorporate into this folder. Now, let's move to another important topic, which is how we implement the search and uh, indexing. Uh, we have a React component dedicated to this, which uses Algolia library under the hood. Upon uh, searching, like if you click on search, uh, the bar, the hits or results are displayed in such a way. Uh, like on 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 an overlay uh, with all the list uh, and the maximum twenty uh, items are displayed in one go. Each record in this index or uh, in our Algolia index contains one heading, the paragraph uh, which it uh, refers to, the URL to the link. I mean URL to link to uh, like when you click on that, which page or which section to open to, and an ID to identify between these. Now, as mentioned, we use Algolia, which delivers real-time results from the first keystroke. So it is very fast. For Algolia usage with Gatsby, we have to use a plugin called the Gatsby plugin Algolia, and we achieve the functionality using the React version of Algolia's instant search library, which is the React instant search DOM. The indexing method and how we did it can be found in SRC utils Algolia, Algolia JS file. So what we do here is we use the row body field from the GraphQL node for indexing, and we strip it of all the unwanted MDX uh, stuff, uh, and we create one record in the index. Now, a very important topic uh, which everyone wants to know about is about code highlighting. 
So we have different sorts of code highlighting here. You can see examples of this in almost every doc page. We have both code highlighting, uh, like normal code highlighting, and, and highlighting specific lines and line ranges. So you can see how addi uh, code addition, deletion, and special edition, editing, sorry, not the edition, editing, and uh, other sort of editing. Like So we have different sorts of highlighting lines, uh, and we have code for all this in uh, uh, the uh, in the co code highlighting component. So we use uh, Prism JS and Prism React renderer libraries from Formidable Labs for achieving this code highlighting. Since there is no language support for Prisma lang language in uh, Prism JS yet, we have also created our own custom language support for Prisma lang. And uh, this is what you can see in the previous slide: the model which we have created, that is Prisma language uh, and uh, we also have custom light and dark themes for code highlighting. So we use the dark themes mainly for indicating command prompt. So as you can see how we are indicating the NTX Prisma command prompt uh, code, that is the dark theme. So we have both in uh, the Prisma doc. Now for the UX revamp. Uh, we had an old design uh, and we did a huge design revamp on our docs website a few months back. And the re result was hugely you know, like, like appreciated. This is how the old design looked like. Here, the TOC or the table of contents was placed at the top of each page and scrolling down removed this from the view as well. So you cannot uh, come back to the to TOC unless you go to the top of the page. The, and there were also some quick links provided at the top of the navigation. Now, the new design looks something like this. And it's improved the UX to a much better extent because of a number of factors. There was a whole new homepage for docs, and this provided a well needed starting point. Like we needed a homepage or a starting point for docs and a place to quickly guide the users to the main aspects of the docs. We also introduced a concept of buckets, uh, which are like uh, the second header you can see in the light gray. So we group similar content into buckets and place them as a second header under the main quick links header. So this made finding content much easier. Uh, as for the individual pages in the docs, uh, this was much better organized than before as well. And we have two separate sections, the sidebar and the TOC at two sides. And both of them are sticky now and follows you as you scroll. And this made reading the content easier. Overall, we managed to improve the ease of usage, uh, the performance, and accessibility in this new version. Now, moving on to a bonus topic, which I would love to cover. This is our design system, Prisma Lens. Uh, this is also open source. You can check it out in, in the public repo, which I have provided. Uh, this is a design system that is basically guidelines and component library for the family of uh, Prisma projects and products. So this means that all the user-facing products and web pages of Prisma uses UI components from this design library. So it has a theme file which contains uh, specifications for all the colors we use, all the radii, the spaces or margins, paddings, uh, and uh, basically the font sizes, everything. So this follows the system UI theme specification. It's highly atomic. All the components are very low level. and uh, we are still working on this. It's still a work in progress, but uh, you can check out uh, the storybook integration for this in the prismalens.netlify.app and you can play around with the components. So this uh, is something which we are really proud of. So you should really check this out. Now, if you want to know more about any of these topics in detail, please let us know and you can contact me as well. Now I will hand it over to Martina. She's a very witty doc writer to explain more about the process of writing our docs. Martina? Sorry, I was double muted. Hello. I'm just going to uh, share my screen and then uh, talk about okay. filling this lovely website you've built with, uh, with content. So just one second, Alex. How are we looking? Yeah. Ah, perfect. All right. Thank you so much, Nilu, and hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about the writing process here at Prisma. Um, my name is Martina, 
I am a confusingly titled education engineer, uh, but I spend most of my time uh, writing docs. Uh, you can find out more about me on Twitter uh, or GitHub. Uh, and I'll start off by saying that I'm not the only one who writes docs at Prisma anymore. We now have a dedicated documentation team. Um, and it's currently made up of two lovely people who look like this. There is myself, a, a Swedish person in Denmark who joined in, um, a bit too fast there, who joined in uh, 2020, April. And there is Rich, who is a Brit in Sweden, who joined in uh, March 2021, so this year. And apart from the two of us, uh, there are also other people with slightly more normal looking feet who contribute, like the DevRel department and uh, the engineering teams as well. Everyone on the doc team currently is a former developer uh, who decided to take off their developer hat and instead put on the very fancy documentation writing pantaloons, very high fashion and comfortable. So um, we're developers who decided that we'd rather be writing and sometimes regret that choice a little bit. So what do we do all day in our very cool pantaloons? Well, like all writers, we spend a lot of time crying and crying and staring into space because you need a certain amount of drama to be a writer. Um, but at some point, we also fit in our documentation writing responsibilities, which are highlighted here. So we are responsible for documenting new features, uh, creating realistic examples, explaining concept like what's a schema, um, how on earth do the connectors work. We write um, guides that put Prisma into context, like how do you deal with connection management with Prisma? How do you test it? How do you deploy? Um, we maintain the uh, API reference, uh, and of course, we iterate and improve constantly on everything we've written. We manage your uh, feedback and PRs, and sometimes, like now, we do presentation videos and cartoons. Uh, and often, we are the first users of a new feature outside of the engineering teams, so unintended QAs that, that break things. So in short, it helps to be a Jacqueline or Jack of all trades uh, when you are writing documentation. Let's talk about the writing process. So um, Neil has already talked a little bit about or a lot about our website, um, but the things you really need to have in your backpack when you're writing is a familiarity with Markdown. I never remember how to put in images, so I have to Google that every time. Uh, you need, we, we tend to use Visual Studio Code here. Um, we use a lot of custom MDX components and we manage everything uh, in GitHub. And it also helps to have a spare pair of pantaloons and a very strong Pokemon, but I think that really applies to life. So armed with these tools, um, there's four steps really to writing documentation. The first is that you need to be a little bit like Varys from Game of Thrones. And if you haven't watched Game of Thrones, Varys is also known as the spider. Um, he sort of knows everything that's going on all the, all the time, and he is always listening. And it helps to be a little bit of a weird stalker spider person when you're writing docs, because input from docs can really come from anywhere. So here I am as a spider, very pretty. It comes from the PMs or the developers telling you, hey, we've documented or we've built something we need to document. Um, you might stumble across a small feature whilst just testing the dev distribution tag. Uh, I spend a lot of time crawling through trolling through commits and issues and tests and PRs because the developers scurry around and leave little nuggets of wisdom in there sometimes. Internal Slack, because we're a remote first company, is full of information, particularly around why we've decided to build a certain thing a certain way. That's really, really important. Um, and we also learn from your real world struggles that you post on Twitter or Prisma, um, GitHub, or in the external Slack as well. Um, so we're driven by what you um, talk about. And then finally, there's the common problems in the um, ORM and database spaces like N plus one with GraphQL or skip take pagination uh, in, uh, in databases. So we try to preempt people having issues with these things by, by writing docs. So you've been a stalker, you've been a spider, you've kept an eye on everything. The next step is to do some deep research. Uh, and this is my favorite because uh, this is where you really realize you're getting paid to learn things and then write about them, which is wonderful. Uh, so you might spend your days in this kind of environment, very familiar if you're a developer, uh, building a POC, writing examples, asking a million questions of the eternally patient engineering teams, bless you and thank you. 
uh, research broader topics. I recently had to become an expert on JSON path, which hurt a little bit, and uh, connection limits in Postgres, which hurt even more. Uh, you start to think of yourself as a bit of an expert. You start to volunteer to present at conferences. You regret everything, and then you repeat it. This is all part of the research process. But one of my uh, favorite parts is when I get to break stuff. Um, if I manage to find a bug or a use case that hasn't been considered in one of the tests, I feel like I am um, giving back to the teams that are helping me to understand a new feature or a new concept. Uh, and I hope that they appreciate it too. So after you've spent uh, a few days in research mode, like really marinating, uh, you actually have to write something down. Uh, and, and this is, uh, this is the hard part. This is the stage where the majority of the crying inevitably occurs. So to help you um, not suffer as much as I do when I try to write, I have some tips on how to, uh, how to write good documentation, or rather what I think matters. And my tips are <clears throat> to avoid, first of all, to avoid walls of text where it's just Shakespearean prose, uh, where it's very hard to pick out. Does this piece of text answer my question or not? I would break it up with examples, tables, lists, diagrams. Uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, because often people are coming to the docs in anger. They have a job to do. They just want an answer to their question. They don't want to hear how smart I think I am. And I did a history degree, so I love writing, you know, flowery prose. But that's not for the doc world. The second related point is to make your docs scannable. And that means um, separating the key points out into headings so that you can link to them. Uh, and if I scan through the doc in 10 seconds, I can quickly answer is this document um, uh, going to answer my question and make my day today? Um, write for an international audience and make no assumptions. So you can probably make the assumption that people are familiar with TypeScript and maybe a little bit databases, but try to uh, pitch everything at a level where um, a seasoned individual knows how to skip through it and someone who's just starting out gets help. And make sure you don't use any jargon or slang or Latin. Um, because it's not accessible to people who maybe juggle four languages on a daily basis. And finally, don't forget the search engines. And the thing that we spend most time doing is splitting very large pages into smaller ones so that when um, the Prisma docs come up in Google search, people can immediately tell that, yes, this is the page for me, um, rather than say our CRUD page at the moment is a bit long. Um, so you can't really tell if your question about deleting many records is there or not. Stuff that to do. So once you've suffered through the writing process, um, oh yes, I forgot to mention actually, uh, there is a lot of really good discussions on Twitter about what makes good documentation. Uh, this woman uh, has loads of replies to, to her question. And if you're interested in docs and improving yours, I'd recommend uh, checking it out. So you've suffered through the writing process. The next step is to review. We review um, our docs in the same way as we review code. We create a pull request, and then we ask engineering or product or DevRel or whoever has the expertise to have a look. And again, very grateful to everyone who spends the time uh, reviewing. is a tough job, and thank you. Finally, uh, you merge and marvel at your gorgeous content. Uh, and then you repeat that process forever, and I hope not too much of it is spent crying. At some point, though, you need to stop and try to measure your success. Your docs are live, um, but are those magical pantaloons actually doing anything for you, or uh, are you kidding yourself? Um, and the one thing I want to say about measuring success in docs is that it is difficult. Analytics can be misleading. Um, you might see someone spending five minutes on your page, and that might either mean that they are loving it, or they cannot find an answer to their question. So it's pretty difficult. Um, we like to monitor support questions. So after we've written a dense topic, um, check and see if uh, the amount of questions on a specific area are going down or up. Um, where there's also a thumbs up and thumbs down widget on the site that we consult sometimes, but that might either tell you that a feature is confusing or that the docs are bad or good. It's kind of hard to know. Um, and we also appreciate people who raise issues on social media, um, either issues or or if you're happy with the docs, you know, that's always great to hear. Um, 
Yes, and in future, we're hoping to do slightly more advanced testing of our um, of our docs uh, to figure out if we're if we're hitting the spot. And again, uh, some great conversations on Twitter about measuring uh, success in documentation that I think you should check out if you're interested. Uh, and that, folks, is how to be a writer. To round off this presentation, uh, I would like to just let you know again that, as Linda mentioned, Prisma's docs are open source. We very much appreciate it when people take the time to raise a PR, um, raise an issue. You can do that um, on GitHub. So I look forward to encountering you in spider mode on, uh, on the old internet. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you for the presentation. It was really insightful. I do have to say that I appreciate anyone working on any documentation because docs are hard. I remember working on a page last year on SQLize and it, it was a little bit painful. Yeah, I remember. And also feels like there's a lot of intersection between docs and DevRel as well. Yes. It's a lot of crying, Alex, honestly. Um... It's hard work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, any input from you, Nilu? I think I appreciate uh, the components. I think there are things that I never think of, or we just find ourselves taking for granted. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, like I said, it's a very vast topic. Like uh, you can't just cover it in such a short time. But uh, if anybody needs to know anything more or if you have any doubt or any problems with what I have already discussed, you can always contact me, like I said. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Rich is also in the comments and people are showing <laughs> a lot of appreciation for the docs and your presentation as well, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> see you on Slack, yeah. Bye everybody, thank you. Bye and thanks everyone. <laughs>